When you look at a community over the span of five or ten years, not much seems to change. When you look at how much a community changes in 50, 60, or 70 years, it is significant. We're going to take such a case and look at an analysis today on the county seat as we look at Utah's smaller communities in the more rural parts and how transportation and tourism have started to pass them by. We'll also look at some of the solutions. To give you a background on how much impact those changes make on a community, let's start with our story. In the Disney Pixar movie Cars, racer Lightning McQueen finds himself in a town that seems to have been forgotten in the age of high-speed freeways. It may be a movie plot point, but it is a reality many small towns now face. Take the town of Junction, for example. At one time, it was on a prime route for drivers going from California to Denver. But after highways were changed and the freeways opened, it found itself left by the wayside. It's taken a lot of traffic away, a lot of tourist traffic. Uh, when I-70 went in, it made a new main artery from California to Denver. And there was a, an old gas station out here south of town that I worked at as a child when I was in high school and during the summer and after school at nights that was quite busy back in them days. And then when I-70 came in, then it just, it, it was just more or less local people. And so it closed down later on. Without the roads leading drivers into the town, even historically consistent draws to the community began to suffer. The week before the deer hunt, there'd be cars parked, lined up with people going by and permits. The stores was full of people. I remember my dad telling me that uh, the local businesses said that back then during the deer hunt, that deer hunt meant enough to them that, that paid their property taxes for the year and put enough money in the bank that they could afford to keep their business open. And now the deer hunts are uh, very, I've, I've had the local businesses uh, monitor that deer hunt and monitor the business and they say that there's very little impact on their businesses during that time. So how can Junction and towns like it bring visitors back in? The answer lies in improving tourism for rural communities. Utah has done well over the years to promote things like skiing, snowboarding, and the large national parks. We could still do more to promote ATV trails, something Junction and Paiute County can offer. Oh yes, I mean, if people only realize we've not only got some of the greatest ATV trails going and most beautiful sites, and they're not that busy. You know, you don't go every two or three hundred yards and have to pull off to let another go by. You're, you're not traveling in this much powdered dirt. With just a bit of work to advertise the trails, tourism could make a huge difference to this small town. The local businesses would do great with it, with the gas and the convenience. And snacks and goodies and, and provide services for them, maps, information. For the county seat, I'm Joe Davis. We're going to pick up our conversation right after the commercial break and talk about possible solutions, some of the reasons and some of the challenges that tourism is not fulfilling the dream of Utah's smallest communities. We'll be right back on the county seat. There is a place where looking out means looking in where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. One more, here we go again. I tell myself I'm not enough, but one more time is not enough. One last kiss and then you were gone, and I'm here wishing you could stay a little longer. Stay a little longer. Wishing you could stay a little longer.
in a place that is beyond words. There is nothing to be said, except take your time in Bryce Canyon country. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking today about the challenges smaller communities across the state have in tapping into the tourism economy and possibly some of the ways to explore finding solutions to the problem. Joining us for our discussion uh, here at the state capitol is Fred Hayes, who is the director of Utah Division of Parks and Recreation. We have Jack Lytle, a county commissioner from Daggett County, and we have Darren Bushman, a uh, representative from um, Paiute County. These both happen to be class six counties, which represent the smallest counties with the smallest communities. You know, if, if you've only been traveling for the last 15 or 20 years and you drive through you know, cross 191 and into Manila, or you come up 89 through Circleville. They see, they'll see closed buildings that have been shut down. Obviously, there's an old gas station from another time, and and people just assume, well, that's the way it, it's it's been. Um, but you know, our transportation kind of created this whole situation that the the tourism opportunity is you know now challenging communities with by taking commerce away. So as, as we saw in the story, how does that affect countywide? What kind of impacts does it have beyond just the gas station closing or the grocery store or the car dealership moving? Well, it, in our county, what it's done is it's affected the number of people that can remain in the county, right? So how many people can, can actually sustain a livelihood in, in Paiute County? You know, back in the day, Circleville had a car dealership, multiple restaurants, motels, you know, all that. And then when I-70 was put in place and I-15 was finished and Highway 20 was now turned into a three-lane highway, it left Paiute County in the middle of, of no man's land, so to speak. So, you know, it's, it's had a grave effect on commerce and the ability for people to make a living um, in those small areas. What, what about your county? The thing that's most difficult it, it probably is trying to keep our young people there to, and having jobs for them in that sense. Um, because one, it's a seasonal, the recreational industry for, or the, the tourist part of our, our economy is very seasonal at this stage of the game. So we're challenged with trying to come up with things to try and extend the seasons. Um, another part of it is the difficult part of as it becomes more recreational oriented, uh, prices go up, people want to, and, the, and our residents become seasonal residents, for many, many do. Um, we have a core population, obviously, um, but when you've got roughly a thousand people in the whole county, uh, we're trying to still figure out ways to rely on, on the seasonal aspect of it and still support, for instance, our ag economy and the people that stay Year round. Did Daggett County used to uh, benefit from a more active forestry uh, industry? Uh, absolutely. Um, the the advent of the roadless designation on the forest, in particular, um, slowed down to non-existent. We at least had one sawmill that was permanent in the area that no longer exists, and then people would bring in their portable sawmills for those areas. Uh, the a lot of the designations that are more oriented, uh, less less multiple use oriented, mm -hmm. um, have been difficult to deal with in in terms of allowing for the multiple use or the resources to be to be valued in all ways rather than just for one reason. So it's pretty safe to say that that the negative impacts are on on the communities. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to address the issue of of the challenges you have in making the transition to a tourism economy and, and some of the factors that play into that, like state parks. Mm -hmm. And we'll do that right after we come back from a commercial break here on the county seat. 149 million years in the making, dinosaurs once roamed this land. Now they're found at the Dinosaur National Monument. Let's take you beyond the bones. We call it Dinosaur Land. You'll find it offers adventures and sights not seen anywhere else in the world. Come to Dinosaur Land, Vernal, Utah. You'll want to stay forever. 
the dinosaurs did. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. Are you ready for some rodeo? July 13th, 14th, and 15th is the Ute Stampede Rodeo in Nephi, Utah. 8 p.m. nightly, more than 2,000 new seats added to that amazing facility. Cotton Rosser, the legend, brings the livestock to challenge the RCA Cowboys. The entertainment, the Flying U Flying Cowboys, along with Emmanuel Latza, who will be there to perform acrobatics over Mexican fighting bulls. July 13th, 14th, 15th, we'll see you at the Ute Stampede. If you're looking for gold at the end of the rainbow, you'll probably be disappointed because in Paiute County, the only thing you'll find at the end of a rainy day is the promise of adventure. Highway 89 is your access point through Marysville and the historic trails of Bullion Canyon. Find yourself in the mountains one minute and the desert the next as you follow in the footsteps of the pioneers. Whitewater raft, fish, hike, all within a few minutes of a comfortable bed and a warm meal. Find out why the world has made Paiute County its off-road destination. Paiute County, the place where the rainbow ends. Welcome back to the county seat. We're talking about the challenges small communities have um, in shifting or participating in tourism as part of their economy portfolio. Uh, you wanted to follow up on a point that Jack made in the last segment, Darren. Yeah, I think, I think Jack hit on something that was really key in that we have a housing crisis in Paiute County. And it's not because we have a, a, an influx of people, it's that we have a lot of people that have bought up all of the homes in the county as second homes. They come one week a year, two weeks a year. But we literally have young families that are living in their parents' basement because there's no place for them to live. And they've driven the, the housing prices up to where now it's very difficult. So in transitioning to a tourism economy, who works in the tourism? right, industry, it, it's those young families that now have no place to live. And so it's a double-edged sword. It's a real challenge of how do you deal with that um, second home scenario and, and the housing situation. May I add to yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, and I think down there as well as I, I know for Manila, Dutch John areas in our county, we don't have a, a, an urban neighbor that can supply those workers even if it's 40 minutes away. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, there's not a good alternative yet, short of trying to develop the, either the low, low cost housing, low rent housing. So are you looking at becoming a dormitory community? Is that the solution? Well, that's the hard part. You know, for us to go in, we're tied at the hip to these small communities. That's where our state parks are found. And to find employees in those small towns that are gonna stay in those small towns is a difficult task. You, know, you want to serve the public as they come and visit. You want them to come and visit, but you got to have people there to host them. And if the people aren't there because they can't live there, it makes it incredibly difficult to to hire people. How do you guys tap into the to help? I mean, you know, the Office of Tourism has all kinds of matching fund grants available to help you start bringing people in and get them not to buy second homes, but get them to visit and, and come play and recreate. And, and, and they've been very, very good at that. And, yeah. and we're grateful for what we've gotten. But at the same time, um, because of the way the cost shares are set up and, and our relatively, if not just plain low budget for the small counties, we get lost in the shuffle sometimes and, uh, and are unable to even utilize some of it because we can't fund to the extent that it needs to be. That Jack's right on. I mean, it, the challenge, Paiute County up until this last year hasn't really participated in any of the UOP funding because it was a 50-50 match. Um, there were some concessions made for what they call the Jump Start Program, which allowed us to go to a 25-75 match up to a, a very limited amount of money. But um, at least it, it gives us the opportunity to do that. But you know, aside from even the grant money that's out there, the challenge, Chad, is that tourism takes two things. It takes people and it takes money. It doesn't just happen without those two things. You have to promote your area, promote your assets, and you have to have people that are willing to do those things. And, you know, in, in a small county like Paiute County, we don't have a tourism function. We don't have a tourism director. We have a volunteer tourism board. Um, 
which kind of uh, loses its interest occasionally, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So it's really a challenge when you're dealing with volunteer people. I say it's the STP, you know, it's the same three people. Those are the, the same three people that are, are helping you with tourism or the same three people that are out doing search and rescue and they're also your EMTs and, you know, the, they're on your Jeep, possibly, whatever, you know, so it's that same group of people. And so it's a real challenge. We don't have a lot of money to match these grants. In addition to that, the grants have historically been for out-of-state marketing, which is a, a real challenge for us because we're not a county big enough to go out and do a, a national marketing campaign. Right. What we would really like to see is, is to stop the bleeding out of the state of Utah. Let's entice the Wasatch Front to come to our area. How do state parks play into that, Fred? Well, we felt for a long time that, that a community like Paiute County communities or the Daggett County communities or list a hundred of them across the state, they don't really care if a guy comes from Salt Lake or Singapore. The, the money that's spent in that community is valuable to that community. community. And when they come and they have a really good experience, they come back. I was talking to a guy yesterday and he said that travel through their community it feels like somebody has set the guy on fire and he's going through town just as fast as he can to get out the other end. And somehow we've got to slow them down. And that's our function is to slow them down, get them to come spend a few days. They've got to have the supplies to, to have a, a viable recreational experience at one of the parks and get them to go out into the communities. We try really hard to partner with the, the counties and the communities to make sure that we're advertising their events, their rodeos, you know, fishing tournaments, all of those things. Stay in the park, participate in the community. That's where we see our, our best niche and our best programming. How does the state park system function in, in a way that, that's different than, say, a guy putting in a hotel or a restaurant. Is, is there a, a gap that, that the parks bridge as far as being able to create and open up access to some of these smaller rural communities? Well, in addition to the park management function, and, and admittedly, a lot of the park management is hotel type, lodging type, mm -hmm. but in addition to that, we administer the statewide programs for boating and for off-highway vehicles. And we've worked really hard to try and get those off-highway vehicle trails especially to connect the communities, give you an opportunity to hop on an ATV or in a UTV or your Jeep or whatever you want to do, uh, get a little dirty mm -hmm. by taking the back roads into local communities. I'm absolutely convinced that the, the culture of Utah is best experienced when you're off the pavement and you've got a little bit of sand in your face and you come in and, and you look like you've been dragged behind the machine. But that's where you really experience the culture of Utah by seeing and by interacting with the, the local folks. There are gonna be small communities that are on the loop of the big five, the, the mighty five, and they're gonna go, what are you guys talking about? You know, life is good for us. Mm -hmm. But in particular, your two counties, you've got Flaming Gorge that, that, that kind of helps you, but it's not anything like Lake Powell as far as traffic goes. Um, you guys have got the Paiute ATV trail system and, and that's really about it. And, and I have to admit, Marysville has made a pretty good comeback. As, uh, I don't think it's anywhere where it could be, right. but it seems like it's made a pretty good comeback. Marysville's, Marysville's seen an impact, and it's a lot because of the geography of where Marysville is located and the access to the trail systems. But then you look at other communities in our county that don't have that luxury of the trail system access and whatnot. They haven't, they haven't prospered nearly as well as Marysville has. And so, you know, the challenge is, is how do you spread that around? How do, you, how do you affect Kingston? How do you affect Junction? How do you affect Circleville? And that's the challenge because Marysville, by virtue of just where it happened to be, um, has benefited from it. So, you know, now what do you have to do? You have to put people and money in trying to get people to see the rest of the county, the rest of the things that you have. So what are the obstacles? I mean, I mean, why don't you just build trails into into Kingston? Why don't you just build trails into into Circleville, or or you know, find a, a route between Vernal and Dutch John? Why? That seems like, I, I mean, it seems like a, 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 an opportunity. Well, and those things have been worked on. I know. Yeah, and some of that we've been able to do. You know, some of it we've been able to actually see routes developed, but I've never been through a a planning process yet where we netted more routes than we had when we started. 
you know, usually it's a reduction of opportunity that happens when we do a, a planning process, especially with, with some of the federal agencies. You know, Jack and I had this discussion long and hard a couple of days ago. How do we connect two counties that are separated by a mountain range that there are roads going all over, but we're not allowed to use them because they no longer technically exist? It's, it's a difficult challenge to overcome. We're going to address that question when we come back. You're watching the county seat. Look south to adventure. Look south to beauty. Look south to San Juan County. Out here, the road goes on forever, and what you'll find will change how you see the world. Climb on your OHV and discover forgotten landscapes and vistas that challenge the imagination. From Blanding and Monticello to the cliff faces of Monument Valley, we're open and ready for you to explore. San Juan County, Utah's Canyon Country. There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised, where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. in the basin with the Ute Reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. Have you ever wanted to recreate the world around you? Add some excitement, culture, adventure? Well, there's no need to remake the world when that perfect combination already exists. Just remember four words. Welcome to Weber County. In Ogden, you'll find everything you're looking for, from the top of Powder Mountain to the restaurants of our revitalized downtown. Ogden, Utah. Mountain to metro and everything in between. Visit Ogden.com. Too often we find ourselves in shoes like these. Or these. Wouldn't it be nice to change into something more like this? Or this? How about these? Put on whatever shoes you prefer and come to Beaver County. We have exactly the adventure you need to put under them. So the next time you want to change out of these, come to Beaver County where you can jump into a pair of these. Beaver County, Utah, lace up for adventure. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking today about the challenges of tourism in the most rural parts of the state of Utah and how they cash in on the dream. Fred, how can, how can state agencies like state parks actually help some of these communities? Well, you know, for a long time we've talked about this overarching vision that uh, Governor Levitt actually gave to us years ago, where he said he wanted a trail within 15 minutes of everybody's home that would take them to any other point in the state of Utah so that they could have a, a recreational experience, a trail-related experience. As we started looking at how that would affect the OHV community, we came up with this concept that we've kind of loosely called dirt tourism. You know, the dirt roads in the state of Utah are the scenic roads. They're the great ones. You know, long before anybody ever went anywhere on asphalt, you got to where you were going on dirt roads, and a lot of those roads are still there. And so we came up with this notion of could we connect communities to each other and communities to the, the scenic lands via these dirt roads and trails. And that impacts the small communities. There are dirt roads coming into and out of every small community in, t in the state. And now all we've got to do is get across those roads and people start to come into, you know, the, the junctions, the Circleville, the, the Dutch Johns, the Manilas. All of those towns are somehow connected by small dirt roads. We've just got to get that network perfected. What does it take to get it perfected? I mean, it sounds like, it sounds so simple, you know, if you, if, if it's just saying, okay, well, we've got these roads, we're gonna designate them as a route. Why, do, how do, why does that not happen? I wish it was that easy. You know, there's a, there's a great route from Marysville all the way to Grand Junction, Colorado. Really? The only problem with it is, is that you go through about two quarter mile segments of the national park through the corners. They're a quarter mile long. You can't do that. It's not, not legal, it's not acceptable. You either gotta build a route around it or figure out how to work with our federal partners to make that happen. Solution? Well, you know, it's awfully easy for us to sit on this end and say, those guys ought to just acquiesce. That's pretty easy and that's, you know, we could then walk home and smile and feel really good about ourselves. But the better answer is, we've gotta get everybody at the table. 
We've got to have the support of everybody who's involved. We can't do it alone. You know, the counties can't do it alone. We've got to get everybody at the table. And if we can't get across those quarter miles, we've got to find a way around them. Do you think that's possible? In many cases, I do. I do. But it costs money. It's going to cost us some right-of-ways. It's going to cost us some easements. It may cost us some construction, bridges, those kind of things. But yeah, I think it's possible in most cases. The other thing, Chad, I think that we're going to resolve some of these issues for these small counties that aren't currently prospering through tourism is we, we need to relook at our vision for tourism. We, we've really spent a number of years looking at the Mighty Five, and we've looked at promoting strictly outside of the state. At some point, we have to think about what's the leakage of tourism dollars out of our state. You know, maybe we should start looking at advertising to our residents about what we have in the state. I think there's something to be said for that because there's certainly a leakage of funds going out of the state to other areas when we may, may very well have that asset right here in our own state. No, I'd have to, I would have to agree with that. And we have, the, every county has some asset uh, along those lines. Uh, the Green River, for instance, and the fly fishing from below the gorge, as well as Flaming Gorge, from a, and then the elk hunting, the, the wildlife resources, um, obviously have the, ha, have an important place in our county's economy. But we also have the important need of, of that balancing act of how do we make it all work so that whether we're looking at multiple use or some aspect of multiple use, but remembering that, that we can all play together if we can get, all get on it to the table and actually uh, sincerely sit down and try and solve the problems. Um, We've, we've all been through different kinds of uh, planning efforts uh, where one person at the table isn't necessarily sincere in their effort to make it work, but they're gathering evidence later for the lawsuit to fight it. And, and those kinds of things are, those are the things that we don't want to dwell on right now because what we've got is we've got communities that need to be able to f flourish in one form or another and our ability to do that I think with the, especially with the help of state parks, um, the, the tourism board, the tourism uh, influence f that we have within our state, I, I couldn't echo m more th that we can keep turning people into our state too. We've run out of time for our half hour. Thank you very much for your comments. We are going to actually continue this conversation online for a few minutes. There are a couple of points we wanted to make and we weren't able to. Thank you for watching The County Seat. We'll see you next week on The County Seat.